right. Thanks everyone for making it part of the community stand up. I think number nine. Uh, I actually always forget uh, <laughs> what number we are, uh, but uh, somewhat around 10. Uh, this time, well, we are heading towards Pyro version 0.12.4. So that uh, is our first point of discussion. And then uh, we move forward. I uh, wanted to demo a couple of things, um, namely one new plugin that will be released with the 0.12.4, which is called Pyro Breadcrumbs. Uh, and the other is the ability of actually removing uh, typing information um, of the yeah of anything, but uh, most useful of the pilot API using the new version of uh, Deets um, that is also then included in um, Pyro 0.12.4. So Pyro 0.12.4 it should be released let's say end of uh, mid or end of this week. Um, what are the the big um, let's say features of this one? Uh, on the one hand uh, side, we we have uh, a new plugin with uh, Pyro breadcrumbs. On the other hand, we improve the uh, scaffolding capabilities, most importantly of uh, pilots. Um, there, you can now actually. Uh, enhance the package JSON. There are multiple ways leading to that, uh, and uh, you can read more in the um, issue on GitHub. And uh, last but not least, uh, we will also support Webpack 5. That support will actually be rolled out with uh, a new bundler plugin. Uh, so right now we have Pyro CLI parcel for the parcel bundler. Pyro CLI Webpack for Webpack 4, actually, and uh, Pyro CLI Webpack 5, which will be the version um, that's only dedicated for Webpack 5. Uh, in the future, we don't know if uh, Pyro CLI Webpack will actually be, let's say, an alias and uh, will only then use either Pyro CLI Webpack uh, 4 or 5. So if there's maybe a dedicated version for 4, we don't know yet, um, or if Parcel I Webpack will always be um, yeah, stuck at version 4. But at the moment, we will definitely uh, roll it out in dedicated versions or dedicated packages, so to speak, to actually not break anyone's code because we know uh, Webpack 5 is a break and uh, it's a breaking uh, release, and uh, therefore, um, yeah, we don't want to risk someone updating the Pyro CLI, updating Pyro CLI Webpack, and uh, in the end, of course, having them to, to somewhat um, get a broken Webpack configuration to work, which is never uh, fun. All right, so that being said, uh, let's just jump right into a quick demo round um, for uh, the Pyro Breadcrumbs plugin. I made a yeah, a small demo application, uh, very simple. I just scaffolded, uh, as so often, uh, a new version of a, of a Pyrel instance. Uh, in this Pyrel instance, uh, I did a couple of things. One is I added a new package called Pyrel Breadcrumbs. I get the create breadcrumbs API from it, and I include it in my um, plugins definitions that I that I want to add here. Now, there are a couple of options I can utilize. So if I don't say anything, well, you get the default, but maybe you already want to define some breadcrumbs. What makes quite often sense is that you define, for instance, that there's a slash uh, a breadcrumb for slash, which I would just call home maybe. And uh, that's about it. So now Pirate Breadcrumbs is, is ready to be used. Um, so we can, for the moment, let's say, forget about all of that. Let's just comment it out. And uh, we can have a look at layout, where I introduced in my in my uh, full layout. Uh, sorry, here is it uh, a new component called breadcrumbs. So usually in the standard uh, layout that you get from the scaffolding, you have in this container just the children, which is the content. But maybe you want to have a little bit more. Maybe you want on top of the children actually the breadcrumb information. So you just insert breadcrumbs. It's the same as with menu or notifications. So this 
placeholder component is just coming from pilot breadcrumbs. That's it. So all it does is it connects to the to the global state, and it, in this case, listens to uh, path changes and um, then it reflects it in the breadcrumbs list. So let's have a look here. Um, I am here on home, and that's it, right? So home. Not very spectacular. I mean, if I go to to other routes, then uh, this. Uh, is uh, not so useful at all. So now, how? What can we use here? What uh, is uh, so special about it? Let's introduce the code that we just commented out. Let's introduce a tile um, that goes to a new page, and uh, then maybe for this one page, let's re let's register a breadcrumb. So. The way how to do it is just via the path. So you now say, oh, I have a new breadcrumb, it's foo, and by the way, it has a parent breadcrumb, that's just slash here. Let's just save that. So we now have here a link, a dashboard, go to the page, and now suddenly we have home foo. And if we go back, it's just home. So quite great. So this thing already updates and it already has some information in there. Quite nice. Now, I already placed a link here. At this point in time, it will not work, but let's just bring it online. Let's just have this here. And uh, same same story, we go to foobar, we have a breadcrumb, and that now is a parent foo. The reason for actually not having it say kind of a special identifier or so on as a parent is that first of all, you can use uh, also parameters in there, so it, could be flexible in the pathing, uh, and that way it will actually match the, the same parameters. But second of all, that goes across pilots. So you could have in, in one pilot, you could register a <clears throat> slash foo bar, and now in, in the second pilot, you have a slash foo bar, whatever uh, uh, child segment you want to have here. And actually it will properly fall down and it will just work. So this also scales uh, like that, just implicitly. Okay, now did we register that? Yeah, it seems fine. So now we are at home foo bar, great. But the, the one thing that's a little bit of course concerning is, oh, there is no space in between. And also maybe I want to have a behavior of breadcrumbs that I like. So for instance, home should be a link now, foo should maybe just stay as a text because we're on the full page and here bar should be a text and we should have two links. So what can we do? The first is uh, like other things like notifications, etc. cetera, um, we can actually define the components that are used for the individual parts. And uh, breadcrumbs like notifications also has two parts. One is the individual item, so the breadcrumb we can say. That's a breadcrumb item. So if we just define that and we define it in a way that if we are the current, we just display um, a spawn. And if we are not the current uh, breadcrumb, we are a parent breadcrumb, then we actually pick a link. Let's do that as a behavior. We go to foo and now we see, oh, home. Great, we can now go back and we can very easily navigate here and it just works as we expect. But again, there is now this, well, there's no space in between. It looks <clears throat> not very nice in my opinion. So what can we do? We can just insert the second component, which is the holder of all the breadcrumbs and it's called a breadcrumbs container. And we wrote a little bit of React code here that essentially just, uh, yeah, makes an, an, an array out of all the children and then we just insert um, a new component in between. You can of course use CSS styling to maybe achieve that uh, in here. Again, we achieved it via some HTML that we bring in via JSX. And now it looks already quite nice, right? So we have now home, foo, and uh, if we go to bar, I think that looks quite nice. And you could of course go crazy and say, oh, actually here, in the diff, I, I may have uh, the desire to have a, a different font size, I don't know, uh, 0, 08 EMs. And if that works, fine. And that already looks a little bit smaller. And you could say, oh, that's not enough. Uh, let's make it just half. 
and now it's really tiny and maybe that's exactly what you were after uh, and so you now have nice breadcrumbs and it's all uh, in a very consistent data model. Right, so that's Pyro breadcrumbs. Um, any questions towards Pyro breadcrumbs or to the 0.12.4 at all? Not at this point from my side. Okay, then let's just move on. The next thing I wanted to show is how to customize the uh, declaration. So let's stay with that example application. Um, if we generate the declaration, which is also generated implicitly for you uh, when you want to, to uh, have the emulator up and running, then we'll see the following. Let's just open that file. We have our pilot API and that now includes a couple of things. And among them, we have, for instance, all of these, including pilot breadcrumbs API. So far is it good? I mean, we included all of them. So yeah, maybe they should be part of it, but let's say of the pilot uh, core API, one of the things like, I don't know, Un unregister page shouldn't be there, right? So let's maybe make it something like this. How can we how can we actually do that? Is is that possible at all? And uh, before it was not, right? Because the, the problem is that in uh, TypeScript, this concept of interface merging only considers adding things. There is no notion of removing actually st stuff. And so the question is, how is it possible? Now that the nice thing is, uh, we actually can do it because this, this, this declaration is actually generated and uh, we can abuse that since we control the generator for this uh, declaration. So all we need to know is where actually, for instance, this core API is coming from. Um, and if we know that, of course, we can do interface merging. So let's just, try to find out where is it coming from. Um, so let's for this maybe use pilot core, pyro core API, second. Uh, pilot core API. Just type it in, let's see. And it should just come from pyro, it says, but I don't think that this is the real. Uh, so this comes from pilot core lib types API, okay. So it's in lib types API. So that's all we need to know. And uh, if we know this, then we can of course do the interface merging, declaration merging, and we have the pilot, pilot core API, I think. And again, we can just add things like, let's for example, add bar here, and let's just run it. So we see bar now appeared here, but we actually wanted to remove something, right? So let's try to, to remove something here. Let's add a comment for this. And then we need to abuse some special kind of comments. Uh, luckily, they are uh, all documented. So in the DETS repository, um, we have uh, a little bit of special treatments documented here. And uh, you see, for instance, that there is the standard ignore flag, which uh, has also some behavior introduced. But again, it's something that was defined outside of our scope. And what we can do is exactly what we see here. So we just uh, use the DETS remove prop and we just need them to specify which prop to remove. So let's just do that. And then let's say we don't want an unregistered page to appear. So let's try that. All right, was done. Now you see there's a register page. It's a register extension, but there's no unregistered page. So quite nice. 
Uh, it doesn't mean that this API is no longer there. There's a difference, of course. So it only means that in our TypeScript declaration, we say it's no longer there. Now, what we, of course, could do is that we remove it also from the functionality point of view. But again, these are two different um, things and uh, you need to be cautious here. Now, the other thing that you may want to do is, um, yeah, we have all these APIs that we extend from, but what if you want to remove one? Like it's, let's say, for instance, the uh, menu API. What could be the reason for that? Uh, yeah, we could say, yes, sure. Uh, we want to use, for some reason, Pyro menu, but we don't want this to be exposed to the pilots. Now, how can we remove it from the declaration since, yeah, it's already in the interface merging. And again, we only need to find out who extends from that. So that's the pilot custom API. Uh, if you don't know where it is coming from, um, I actually will make that now quick. That's just in the custom section. So we have the pilot custom API. We introduce it here. And yeah, now we could do some declaration merging, but again, we don't want to do that. What we want to do is remove clause. So um, that's an uh, extension clause. The extends and let's remove pilot menu API. Let's do that. Let's run it. Okay, so far so good. No errors is always good. And you can see already that updated, there is no pilot menu API here. So quite nice. Um, we could go on. I think we can specify that multiple times. And uh, that way we could actually, yeah, end up with a couple of APIs that are uh, no longer there. Um, everything that we want somewhat to, to be removed, we could do. And uh, that way you can tailor your, your API as you want to. All right, any, any questions uh, towards this? Uh, no, it was uh, rather quick. Um, there's a lot more to it, of course, uh, but that's what what uh, deeds can give you out of the box. Um, and uh, that way you can really uh, take a little bit of control back when this, uh, these uh, declarations are, are being formed for you, which is quite nice. You can tailor that. Uh, potentially there will be even a rename command. Uh, again, it's all just a declaration. It doesn't mean that this has a functional consequence. So there are two separate parts. Uh, one is taking care of the declaration and the other is taking care of the functionality. If you want to be consistent, you need to do both, but there may be reasons to just hide certain things from, uh, from the end user, right? Or from, from some developer and uh, maybe use them internally and, and really not remove them uh, fully. Um, but that's, that's then up to whoever creates the uh, parallel instance and makes makes the declaration. Any questions? Okay, if not, then I would say um, thanks and uh, yeah, hear you next time. Great, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.